Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Karua Auto, their more freestyle-focused board. This board features Karua's float camber, which is rocker in the nose, and then camber from outside the front insert all the way back to the tail. Basically, directional cam rocker. So you're gonna get that load and pop of traditional camber, but you're gonna get that float of rocker in the nose as well as the ease of entry in and out of turns. This board is available in three sizes, 153, 157, and 161. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a day that was high visibility gray bird, which meant no flat light, so you could actually see the transitions in the snow. It was a little bit warmer temps. There was some wind, but not a lot. There were pockets of fresh powder, depending where you look, perfect corduroy, a little bit of ice, a little bit of chunder, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. This board has a middle of the road freestyle flex to it, even though it's directional. So what you do get is slightly softer nose than right when it hits the camber section. It's pretty much an equal flex back to the tail, which is ever so slightly stiffer. And there's a moderate amount of torsional flex, but not a crazy amount. When it comes to stability on this board, it's stable to a point. I mean, you're gonna get some chatter out in the nose. When you get into rutted out terrain, that's where you start to notice that this thing gets bucked around a little bit, but you're not gonna wash out. So you keep those knees bent and just be prepared that you're gonna take an abrupt hit right from the inserts back up into your lower back. I know I did bomb dropping a few things. I'm too old to be bomb dropping things. Oh well, anyways, moving on. With this board being basically camber with some rocker in the nose, you've gotta load it up to get it to engage to pop. And when you do, it's highly reactive and responsive. So you load it up and you're springing into the air. This is a board that wants to get into the air. So just be prepared. The more you put in, the more spring you're gonna get out of it. You wanna ollie a slow sign, go for it. You wanna ollie up on a rail, go for it. And when it comes to jumps, this thing once again wants to get in the air. It's gonna boost off the lip and take things a little bit further and a little bit higher. Sure, you do have to load that camber section up to get it to engage, but even then, you're gonna be able to pop. I mean, if you wanna be laid back and let the lip through, you're still gonna end up snapping with this thing. Basically, this board wants to get in the air. When it comes to buttering on this board, it's gonna take you a minute to find the sweet spot. So obviously you got this rocker out the nose and that's gonna be an immense sweet spot, but you wanna find right where that rocker meets the camber so that you can leverage your weight out over it and you need to know how much to put in. If you overemphasize this, you're gonna go over the handlebars. That's just kind of how it is. And it is easier to butter on the nose. With the tail, you gotta kind of muscle it a little bit more. You gotta kind of sit on it just to get that board to flex and it's gonna wanna fight you in there. So if you're looking to swivel and sizzle with ease, not gonna happen, but if you know how to manhandle it, muscle it around, shouldn't be a problem. Now, when it comes to jibbing, once again, you got this immense sweet spot with the rocker in the nose. And as I said, you can go over the handlebars. So if you're gonna do a nose press, just be more calculated with it. You gotta know exactly how to lock in and how much pressure to put into it. With the tail, you basically sit on the tail, it goes into the press, you hold it, you pop back out of the feature. That's one of the nice things with this board is it wants to spring out of the feature. Now, when you get sideways on a rail, it's a little weird with this board because you do have more nose than tail, so you find that you're looking down and you're like, oh my God, I'm not center. It's an optical illusion. You're centered between the inserts. That's really what matters. And this is a board that it somewhat hugs, but not a normal amount. It just sort of compresses around the feature and you end up sliding with it. Is it going to be the best for jibbing? No. Is it going to be the worst? I've ridden way worse boards for that. It gets the job done. So just go into this knowing, hey, I can hit a rail if I need to. So when it comes to carving on this board, it's a blast. I love the freestyle playful nature of this board because it lets you just disengage a carve when you want to. What's nice is you engage the carve outside the front foot, but you drive it from inside the front foot back, which gives you more spring and power off your back foot, especially when you're in a deep apexed carve. Now, with the softer torsional flex, you can really ankle steer where you need to on this board, and it lets you be more mellow than, say, the tranny finder over here, where you have to be a little more precise and just aggressive with it. Now, with that said, 
You feel mostly locked in when you're on edge, but you can disengage that front foot to help get you out of the car if you need to, versus being more locked in and you're just going through the transition until it starts to mellow up, and then you can flat bottom your board and get out of the carve. Short, tight, quick turns, long, hard, drawn out carves, deep Euro carves. This thing just covers you. It covers you on everything. You're gonna have that power of camber underfoot to slingshot you out of turns, so use it when you need to, but you can be a little more laid back if you want to. So who's this board for? The freestyle focused carver. Best way to sum this up is it's a softer tranny finder with less camber, so it's not as aggressive, so you don't feel it in your knees at the end of the day. This board is a blast as a resort carver and park board. You know, you're, you're kind of getting two boards in one here, and yeah, it's a little more directional, but you can still throw a freestyle flare into it, which is great. Overall, this board's a blast. It's easy to drive, especially through a carve. You don't have to worry about it. It does have some float when you get into powder just because of that float camber, so you got that rocker in the nose. Overall, I think a lot of people are probably sleeping on this board and they need to stop, especially those that aren't riding a lot of switch. They're, you know, their version of going through the park is maybe hitting a hip, maybe blasting a jump straight air, a couple 50-50s, maybe a board slide but then they wanna go lay a trench, then pop a 360 off a side hit. This is what, who that board is for. Comparable boards, the Telos Mike Ranquit, the Academy Masters, the Rome Ravine. This review was made possible by In-Flight Snowboard Shop in California. You should check them out. Maybe buy one of these boards from them. You know, shout out to James Peterson for setting this up as well. We wouldn't have any Karua reviews if it wasn't for you, so thank you. This has been my review of the Karua Auto. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe. Click the bell. Get those notifications. So that way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to help us grow out what we are capable of doing, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.